I think the dude knows before the girl. I never thought I would do reality TV, but I knew that I loved entertaining. It is important that I feel like you find someone who like, you find them funny in like the simplest ways. Welcome back to Off the Cuff. I am your host, Danny Lopriori, and today I'm joined by the very talented, very funny Hannah Burner. I love that your last name is Burner because I grew up with like 14 Burners. You're Jewish, right? I'm half Italian, half Jewish. You half grew up Italian. with other Burners? I grew up with other, a bunch of Burners. I, I, I grew up in Westchester County. Uh, -huh. uh which i grew up in a town called hastings which was like 90 percent jewish i went to like mm -hmm. 14 bar mitzvahs in like a month so long story short my grandpa was jewish but when he was seven he was a loud mouth and he got punched in the face by a rabbi so then he denounced all religion so my and married a blonde german so my dad grew up atheist <laughs> so like jewish guys will hit on me and then they'll like find out i'm not really jewish and then they can't marry yeah. me yeah, yeah. no, my grandfather was a Catholic and then the church like wouldn't help him with something when he was a kid. And he was like, all right, I'm not going to be fucking Catholic anymore. That's and, the and, organized religion. Yeah, yeah. He was just like, no, nah, we're just going to be like Protestant horse now. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm with it. That works for me. I was like, all right, let's do it. You guys know who Hannah is. She's a big deal. Has her own podcast. She was on Bravo Summer House. She's a stand up comic traveling, just doing her thing thing all over the place a d1 tennis player which i had no idea about yes back go in the badgers. day smack some balls go, go badgers. badgers go badgers i was there when it was lit it was like um jj oh, watt yeah. was there russell wilson was there like i got drug tested next to russell wilson i think i tried to make a joke like someone's dehydrated he, and he was like uh -huh. ever, there's a restraining order against me now no yeah it was a good time it's such a good like party sports school Oh yeah, no. What uh, one of my best friends, Jewish. Yeah, his name is Ben Gold, and mm -hmm. uh, he went there and uh, you know, did a lot of jumping around at halftime. He did, he did yeah. his thing. He said it was a great, it's a great party school. When did you start playing tennis? When I was like four or five, I'd watch my dad play doubles with his friends, and then eventually I got good enough to start playing with them. Then I was playing national tournaments internationally, played a little professionally, and then went to Wisconsin. And then got burnt out and now i'm a comedian that's like literally the most spark notesy way of saying it d1 athlete this is a great like conversation starter you look fantastic on paper you know what <laughs> i mean well it's so funny after i graduated my dad was like you can get any sales job you want because we know that you can grind you know how to lose you know how to hustle and then I actually did cold calling sales my first job because my dad was like that's a job everyone should experience so yeah, I definitely have like discipline and I'm a hard worker. I definitely don't feel loved unless I'm successful. Yeah, me too, kind of. <laughs> I mean, it's like you feel a high for a second and then it's like, yeah. okay, what's next? But I do think growing up, I was valued more for like how good I was at sports rather than like looks or other mm. things. So like, I think I have a good sense of confidence in myself and like my body, but I, I have insecurities about like, needing to be respected and successful and things so there's pros and cons to yeah yeah division one athlete like do you still crush though do you like do you still go out and play tennis or you yeah like... i fuck shit up every now and then there's like my dad's friend wants to play and i'm like i'll i'll fuck a dude up i don't care yeah, i used to, I, love I played that. i played on the boys team on the at beacon high school on the upper west side shout out blue demons blue demons um, private school no it's public and we didn't have a we didn't have a girls team so title nine says you have to let the girl play that's why i was asking i was like what kind of like i was like that had to be a public school because we literally were just in a building our basketball court you couldn't play on because the ceiling was so low so you couldn't shoot it <laughs> that was some new real york city, city shit. shit yeah yeah that yeah, is that so new york city, city. so you playing tennis I've always asked this of like people that played like like one on one sports. I always played yeah. team sports because I'm a pussy. You know what I mean? Because then yeah. if we lost, I could blame it on someone else. Did you feel like uh, like pressure to play, or did you actually like love playing? It, no, it was horrible. I mean, I I was naturally like athletic. I loved to run. I loved to hit shit. I was like naturally talented, but I was like anxious. Like I had constant performance anxiety. Like one day I would just like I'd be playing like top in the nation and I would just like lose confidence in my forehand and convince myself like I can't hit a forehand 
I would like lose my second serve. It was like so mental and all my anxiety would come out on the court. Like your relationship with your life, they would always say is like the relationship with the ball. Like if you're feeling insecure, it comes out. It is, they say the court, I'm literally like an old man with sports references, but they say the court is six inches from ear to ear. Like at some point, everyone wow. has incredible ground strokes yeah. and it's really all like the slightest amount of confidence that will help someone win. But what like tennis is similar to boxing, wrestling, that one-on-one, -on -one, like striking each other and strategy. But like when you lose, you're a fucking loser. Like yeah, it's you're so gutted, easy yeah. after basketball to be like, yeah, fucking, you know, Jeremy <laughs> you know, couldn't hit a three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I had 25, so it's whatever. Or coach didn't put me in, not my fault. Yeah. But also tennis to go pro, you are an entrepreneur. You have to pay for all your travel. Unless you get sponsored, you have to pay for all, like, your coaching and your, you know, physical therapy. And then you only get paid if you win. Like, imagine if the Knicks only got paid if they won. Yeah, well, which they never do. They'd be, they, <laughs> they would never be anywhere. They'd be out of business. Yeah, they'd be out of business. So tennis, I'm currently watching Wimbledon. It's a it's a really great sport. Um, and people, t it's now like cool. Like all the Instagram girlies are wearing yeah. their like little tennis skirts and like holding a racket. And I was like, I was a fucking nerd back then for playing tennis. Yep. If you played tennis in the early 2000s, like <laughs> you might have got some D, but like it wasn't crazy. You know? Yeah, like. There's more yeah. soccer girls. Everyone liked the soccer girls. The tennis girls, a lot of them were like Eastern European and scary. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you carry like your clarinet to practice with the intro. <laughs> you always saw a girl with that fucking big ass black box walking down. I'm like, yeah, this girl fucking plays 11 instruments. I do think also the tennis girls are a next level of crazy. Like soccer girls, like they have friends, they have community, they pass the ball to each other. Tennis girls, I'm like, don't fuck with me. Cause it's me versus the world, right? Cause my dad is going to yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> How many times did you go to that fucking weirdo tennis wall where you just bash the ball off to yourself? Not often. That's kind of a like New York city hobby. I feel like that was such a New York thing. I was like, who is this fucking yeah. psychopath? You've never seen himself. someone good hitting against the wall. No, not really. Also psychopath. like you're always going to lose. You're always going to lose. But yeah, handball too. That shit's like, I'm like, that hurts my hand. Oh yeah, I'm Puerto Rican. So I was I, I was born with like semi callous hands. <laughs> these guys are fucking whacking it. And I'm like, the ow. Get out of it. I was like, these guys are outrageous. <laughs> but yeah, no. So, so you're half Italian. I'm also half Italian. As growing up, like kind of like, I guess because like your religion like wasn't so much in it, but like no. kind of being like mixed up. Did you ever have like, like identity crisis? I feel like I was raised in Parksville, Brooklyn, where like, a lot of atheists, a lot of just like non-religious Jews. When I was like in fifth grade, I remember the teachers preaching like, everyone has different parents. Some have like raised by their grandma. Some have two dads. Like it was just the most like yeah. open-minded place, which I was very fortunate to be. But I did feel like tennis, I wasn't able to like socialize and shit as much because I was like playing tennis all the time. Mm. And I, to be a good tennis player, you don't get like weeks off. It's not seasons, it's 24 seven. But deep down, I always felt like I had a silly creative side to me that I was kind of suppressing. Like I was always like the funny one on the team. Like I always had very funny friends and family, yeah, yeah. but it wasn't until I like quit tennis that I was like, oh wait, you don't have to torture yourself every day. And like, cause sports, they teach you like, don't feel your feelings. Like you're not nervous, you're not tired, yes. you're numb. And that's what makes you a warrior. And then I realized like, wait, I can make money just with my natural personality. That would be dope. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't have to wake up at fucking 5 a.m. I literally told myself after college, I was like, I'm never running a time mile again. I'm never waking up at even 6 a.m. unless it's for a flight. And I started to have like boundaries with myself and listen to my own voice of like, what do, what really, brings me joy. And I tried the whole nine to five thing. I did like cold calling. I did marketing. I did like, like selling t-shirts for a while. And then I basically was like, I want to do video. Cause I did some sports broadcasting. I knew how to edit. Yeah. And then like in two years I was on a TV show. So like, I'm not trying to be like, Oh, I manifested this, but like, I didn't not manifest it. People have to understand like luck is kind of part of manifestation. There, there, there's a part of it. That's just like, people ask me, they're like, yeah, like, how'd you get started? I was like, yeah, I had no job and made a song about titties. Like but action is always involved. 
Yeah, yeah. So it was like, all right. So like I tell people this too all the time. It's like a lot of people go viral, but it's like, are you prepared to stay viral in a way of like to stay, you know, I don't like to use the word relevant because I always feel like a 16 year old girl like yelling at some like girl that like fucked her boyfriend. You know, it's like you're not even relevant. A lot of people aren't really prepared for like certain shit. I knew it was getting I knew I was getting to a point of like Internet fame or whatever it was when people like started to say like mean shit to me. Oh, yeah. So that's when I knew I was like, oh, everybody doesn't love me anymore. It's like, yo, this fucking guy's gay all the time because I I made like one song about an art, like if an art, like an openly gay R&B singer, because like, you know, like music is like, you know, not very like openly gay yet. So I was like, hey, I'm going to do this openly gay R&B singer and people. Yeah, Frank Ocean was singing like about girls in his love song. It's like even like when he does songs now, I'm just like, all right, like my guy pretty like a girl. I'm like, finally, like we got one. You know, like rock your shit. An open minded ally. Yeah, dude. You're an ally. I'm fucking (laughs) allied up. No, I always say like this year, but it's all right. Next year. (laughs) They don't. It's okay. If you check someone's podcast reviews and they're all positive, I'm like, oh, no one listens to this podcast. Yeah, right. (laughs) Our podcast used to be like five. And then I saw it like 4.8. I was like, all right, people are listening. We made it. We made it. Well, it means like people know who you are. I joke and became good friends with Alex Cooper. And she had me on Call Her Daddy a lot. And she's been like an inspiration to me in terms of like how hard she works and how she creates and staying relevant. And I tell her, I said, when I feel down, I check your podcast reviews and it makes me feel better. (laughs) Because like this girl gets destroyed, destroyed. You think it's like Tom Brady after a game, check Twitter. He's the worst quarterback that ever played football. Yeah. Or they talk about him like kissing his son on the mouth. (laughs) That's like every other comment. It's like, this guy kisses his kids on the mouth. I'm like, this dude just threw... 600 yards you know i'm just like jesus i'm like guys i can never retreat enough to be like i'm gonna turn my comments off no but i, but I thought about it but the thing is is like if you retreat that's when you break never <laughs> never retreat never delete is is something that i live oh, by hell now yeah i also think that like you just can't let it f- affect your creativity like i know yeah. people who will get insecure and stop going to post stuff because they might be cringe or like stupid or unfunny and it's like if you're making yourself laugh or you're like in a friend group laugh you post that shit because yeah, also sure. like people can sense an authenticity or people can sense when you're like trying too hard and sometimes the haters sometimes they're on point like they will find yeah, the one thing you're so right. fucking insecure about and i'm like damn <laughs> like sometimes they'll be like she she wasn't even that good at tennis or like some they'll find like the thing that like hit like your little brother would say to you and you're like ah! you're so right about that though because one time <laughs> i remember i took a picture and some dude was like yo you need a dental cleaning and i literally went and got it like a week later i was like he, he's actually right i went to the dentist and it was just like oh yeah like you're due for cleaning i was like that motherfucker was right that motherfucker is like a, a dentist i had another one where I lost like a ton of weight and like I posted like the weight and somebody just wrote still fat under it. <laughs> that was like, that was like my big one. And then I turned it into like a merch line. Still fat. Yeah. I turned it yeah. into a merch line and that shit sold out like crazy. Yeah. I mean, my podcast Giggly Squad was based off of like a dude who yelled at me and my friend because we were just like nonstop giggling and laughing. And he's like, fucking peanut gallery giggly squad over here. And I was like, that's my new podcast. Thank yeah, you, sir. Thank, you. thank you, sir. Haters can be on point sometimes. I don't, I, I don't want to hate them all, but I hate most of them when it's just like, you know, they just, when you come from the top rope, it's too much. Yeah. You know, yeah. just be respectful enough. Cause like, I wouldn't even write that on anyone. Well, well, that's the thing. You think, would I write this? And you're like, I wouldn't. So what I do when something really hurts is I click on them and I look deep into their lives. Me and too. I'm like, yeah. if that was my husband. I would I would comment that on someone's shit. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, you're private. So you're a pussy. I'm like, or like your daughter's ugly. Here's the thing I always say to people too. When people are like, dude, like you're so authentic and like, you're so cool. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just letting you guys know. I'm just letting you guys know right now. I'm shallow and insecure as fuck. All right. <laughs> Have way too many issues I, I even told like my, my fiance like when we first started dating i was like yo i'm just gonna give you a medical roundup of like what's wrong with me <laughs> well so you, i like that up front you have to be these days they say with reality tv the people like you love um aren't as great as you think they are and the people you hate are not as bad as you think they are and i think that's like so true and me and you have met a lot of people who are like 
public eye and some of them are like better than they are offline and then some of them are like so much worse and you oh, really yeah. don't know you're watching performative people out out here but Especially also in comedy i've had a, so many fucking letdowns oh, in comedy yeah. it, it's almost to the point it's like yo bro like you know i could beat the fucking shit out of you right <laughs> You know what I mean? You know, I boxed for 10 years almost, right? And I could beat the shit out of you in this green room if I wanted. Comics have a lot of insecurities. I don't know about your haters, though. I get a lot of them. It's the religious moms. You always go on that page. It's always like, be kind. Love my husband, David. Actually, no, David's a Jewish name. Bradley? Everett Stevens. Everett Stevens. Yeah, see, for me, it's mostly like uh, I get a lot of like uh, right wing guys that come for me sometimes. I get, uh, sometimes I get some women that wouldn't like a certain joke we made. Yeah. Like we, like we made a song called like, respect your bitches. And then, like, <laughs> and, and then like somebody was like upset that we used the word bitches, but I was like, you guys know this yeah. performance. <laughs> this is my art. That's, that's the joke. I'm currently getting some funny hate right now on a joke. Cause I never do. I never really get political just cause I'm not smart enough. But recently I like figured out the gun debate. And I was like, okay, people say guns don't kill people, people kill people, but that's not true. Guns don't kill people, men kill people. 98% of mass shootings are men. So fine, keep the guns legal, give it to the wives, give it to the girlfriends because they're busy. Yeah, they're let doing them hold their the skincare codes. routine. <laughs> yeah. give, them the, give them the nuclear codes, give them the yeah. locker. <laughs> They are doing their skincare routine. They're going on hot girl walks. They are worried about every other thing. They don't have time to blow up schools. And then people are like, oh, but these guys don't have girlfriends. And I'm like, so then they don't get any. No one gets any. Yeah. And guys are getting very upset about that. And guys are like, well, then she's going to shoot me. And I'm like, maybe that's a good thing. At some point, uh, I've always looked at it this way, too. It's like whenever you see these school shootings, it's obviously I I can barely even watch it because I immediately because I'm self-centered. What if that was one of my kids? Yeah. I have sympathy, but it's like almost like it's obviously I have sympathy for them, but everyone makes everything about themselves. I'm like, yo, like, yeah. if I was there, I would do it's like when Mark Wahlberg said he would stop the 9-11 people. And I was like, thanks, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> I was like, didn't you blind a Vietnamese guy once? Just he put did. on your whitey tidies and relax. Yeah, you know, and and that's the other thing too. It's like I try to like not get political and then too much, but the world is just like <laughs> it's all encompassing with social media right like that's what everybody's talking about but like i don't want to like turn like this type of shit into content but then like a part of me is confused like i want to talk about it so like that's the type of shit i deal with but what's fun about like for example like the kind of joke i said about the guns it's true but it's also like i just want to move things around so people have a different perspective of stuff like even if they're talking like even you being like give bitches respect like that's a conversation that makes you're spinning things on their yeah. head Let's and making people it. see things through a new lens and like that's what i love about comedy especially with like masculinity femininity dating like i love to just like make people question the social norms and i like no one talks about how it's all dudes and i'm like so why are like get me out of this narrative like yeah. let me i can have a gun because i'll fucking make it look cute i'll put i'll bedazzle <laughs> it I'll i mean i'm pretty metrosexual myself so i would probably bedazzle my guns too i'm the <laughs> only one in my family that still has hair oh, all, wow. all my brothers are bald yeah. i have no i have no balding whatsoever i mean i just cut my hair because it's yeah time, but all my oh, hair wow is gorgeous yeah, so- so my hair is all here. It gets long and it's very straight because my mother is of native uh, Puerto Rican descent. So I, I do get my hair cut like every two weeks. And then like I wear cropped pants oh. and, and, and common project sneakers. Yes. Yeah. It's your like uniform. Yeah, that's my uniform, you know, but I, 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 I street it up from time to time. Speaking of comedians that I've met that are actually very nice. Uh, your husband is one. Your husband is one of them. Oh, at Caroline's you met him? Yeah, he he did some shows there when I was working there and I was their fucking slave in there. Uh, <laughs> he was very, very welcoming, very nice. Speaking of haircut, that guy loves to get his haircut. Oh, that man, he is the silver fox. I think he started, he was like better looking once he went gray. Yeah, and some some guys it works out for. If I go gray, it's like, it's not going to be great. I need this dark, dark beard and hair. I need it. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. We'll it see. might look like George Clooney wise. I don't know. I, I found one white hair to my beard and I sat in my bathroom naked for 35 minutes after. 
just <laughs> twirling it in my finger like this. So this is what's happening. This is what's happening to me. Oh this is God. what happened. I, he's bigger in person than how he looks in photos. It's yeah, weird. I was like, oh, like this dude's gonna be five seven. When I saw like, he's I, was three. Like, I was like, God damn, dunk dude. on you. Yeah, I was like, it's yeah. It's because he's good looking, like you assume he, and he has like pretty features. You think he's like little. You don't but think he, people in entertainment are tall too, though. That's what. Yeah, that's like, like they all have big heads and they're tiny. When they're tall, you're like, play a sport. Yeah, Why are you dude. like doing the arts? But I, I liked him because I've, I've dated comics before, and sometimes off stage, they're like still such a comic. Like they're just always trying being a clown. Yeah. Or they're like really dark and insecure and depressed off stage. And he off stage is like very normal, like salt of the earth guy from Queens. And I think I kind of got lucky because I was like, I'll never date a comic again. And then he kind of was just like a normal guy who happens to be funny on stage. He slid in your DMs or you guys met he organically? Did. He slid in your DMs. <laughs> that's, orga that's organic now. Well, I actually saw him play at the cellar like six years ago before I did comedy. And I was like, ooh, that guy's cute. But he talked about how he lived in Ireland. So I was like, oh, I guess I'm not like gonna hook up with him. Yeah, right? You're that's just like, oh, well, that's over. That's such a great <laughs> female privilege right there. Just be like, <laughs> Just, just, you literally went to the comedy cellar and found your husband and planned it out in your head. You're like, oh, he lives in Ireland. Like, I guess I could have sex with him at this point, maybe. I know. I was like, do I want to fuck him? But I also, you, there's like cons to the privilege where like, I've seen a comic on stage before and DM'd him to be like, hey, I'd love to have you on my podcast. And he never responded. And then like years later, he was like, oh, I thought that like, if we met we would have fallen in love and like hooked up and like i was seeing someone i'm like bro i just wanted you on my podcast yeah you can talk to another woman it's all right dude <laughs> also like it would not have worked between the two of us like it no. wasn't it wasn't like that like i was like no, mm, no, absolutely not, not. Yeah, sorry i didn't do your pod i just thought we were gonna like fuck and like it was gonna be like <laughs> magical and shit i mean that's like kind of a compliment though it, you know, it is a, it is a compliment to me but also like i didn't even he he definitely thinks more than most guys I do think that, De so Des lives in Ireland a lot. So during yeah. the pandemic, he came back to West Hampton where he lives. And I was out here with my parents and some cats, like Love it. in a dark place, single 29. And he DM'd me and he 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 saw me in the comedy world. So he kind of knew who I was. And he was just like, do you want to get coffee? And then- Six that months was, later, we got married. married. I mean, no, we got engaged. Yeah. Loved everything about. I love everything about that. I think a lot of people put pressure on people to like wait two years, three years before you get engaged. I'm like, yeah, if you're in love, go for it. You know, my parents got married in, I got engaged in five months. So my love story in my head was like, I'm gonna know. Like, if I'm with a dude for a year, I'm like, mm, he's not the one that's taking too long. And I also feel like I go on a lot of female oriented podcasts and say this, but I'm interested with your people. Like, I think. The dude knows before the girl. 100%. Like all, all the relationships that work out, the dude is always like, I know you're right for me. And the girl might be scared in her head, but like the dude oh, yeah. fucking either knows or he doesn't. I think men love harder in a sense of like fairy taleness. Mm. So, you know, like if a guy falls in love, like he doesn't care if she's like broke yeah. or like doesn't care if she's not like a part of this like kind of work of you know this is what she does what college she went to like what yeah. her family lineage is like <laughs> like girls are like they're like genetics based almost it's like oh he's got his hair he's six three no i know i'm like i want an ncaa athlete <laughs> yeah yeah it's like you know it's like you know like oh well you know there's certain things it's like even like with like i have depression in my family and obviously it's hereditary same or, or it's just like very italian <laughs> puerto rican I, but it, it's hereditary so like you know like that's like girls would be like well like his dad has depression like girls are, are way more way smarter when it comes to like breaking down lifelong decisions okay I, we jump I love out the window it's like, Yo, i'll do everything for you <laughs> i'll fucking i'll eat you out every day i'll kiss you anywhere baby boo boo and then girls are like yo what's your credit score okay definitely in the 30s and they're but smart I, and they're smart i think guys you. are simple emotionally in the way that like they either fucking love you or they don't where yeah. girls i'll fake fall in love with like tons of dudes like, I think he, I'm like immediately like, I'll see a guy at a bar. I'm like, he's the line. Yeah, we're yeah. like, we're, we're, and, that, and then I'll like fall out of it and fall out of love all the time. Make shit up in my brain about him. Where guys are like, they see red flags, I think. 
where girls don't like i'll literally fall for any tall dude ever right and occasional short kings are, like they know when someone's good for them or not like my fiance two weeks in was like i'm marrying you and i was like this fucking narcissist he's right fucking playing games and i'm like i knew he was like all the other ones and i was trying to play some games with him a little and then at one point he was like hey if you want to play games like i actually like i'm out oh. and i like he but in that way he's being vulnerable of course but it's also the, speaking of tennis though it's like who's serving kind of has the upper hand every once in a while mm -hmm. so it's like mm -hmm. oh oh i felt like i kind of had the ball in my court in yeah. this relationship and i think that happens in relationships where like somebody has a little more of the power at the moment and then like it kind of switches and then it goes back and forth it's it's constant i think people have to understand that relationships are a power struggle at times most of the time oh, it's for sure it's just people trying to be heard but it's a fight to get to that point well, yeah, they say after the initial puppy dog phase, it's just like a boundary war oh, where yeah. you're each just figuring out each other's boundaries. And that's when most relationships end. And once you can figure out like good boundaries or just like being good at fighting, that's why it's like show who you are way in the beginning. Oh, like, yeah. If you're, if you're pretending to be like easy to get along with for six months, you could date and last with literally anyone. Oh, yeah. But but with him, I went through some shit in my personal life in the beginning of our relationship. And he saw sides of me that like he's I've never seen in myself. And he was like, no, she, I, I like her, even though she keeps crying all the time. <laughs> I think I'm vulnerable and passionate, but like sometimes too much. Like, I, I don't really have a filter. Well, yeah, because you're Puerto Rican. Yeah, that's true. And Italian. Yeah. So Are you I'm kidding a, me? I'm a nuclear fucking disaster. <laughs> yeah. You're like, all about expressing yourself. Yeah, and my parents had five kids. Every time they were like, damn, another one? Jesus. <laughs> my parents, like, fist fought before they had sex and had me. That's, what, that's, like, what happened. You know, that was the other thing, too. Like, growing up, like, I, I'm, like, a little more mixed race than you, but it's, like, mm -hmm. to a point, it was like, oh, like, hey, like, which Christmas are we going to? They're, like, Italian. I'm like, all right, racist Christmas. Cool. I'm, like, well, <laughs> It's like, well, all right, I'm just getting myself ready. Yeah, I'm not mixed race, but when I did go to the University of Wisconsin, I was considered exotic because I'm oh, Italian brunette. <laughs> like, like, everyone's like, oh what God. is she with this dark complexion? <laughs> Have you guys seen that Italian Jew? <laughs> and they're just like, no fucking way. They're like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, everyone's Let's get like... get our Russell Wilson jerseys and go to her fucking... <laughs> yeah. Dude, I mean, it could be, like, ironic to wear a jersey now, I feel like. No, it can be like if it's like in a funny sense, like if it's a two thousands throwback party, like yeah, like, <laughs> like go very for niche. it. Very niche, very niche. Party, yeah. It's a very niche market, but like they held on to those jerseys and they're fucking making money now. Yeah. I want to go to a nineteen twenties party. I want to wear a potato sack suit. You know? Oh yeah. That's what, you ever see pictures of the nineteen twenties? He was like, look at all these poor people. I'm like, that kid's wearing a three piece suit. Yeah, the Roaring Twenties were wild. Big discrepancy okay, the between the rich well and dressed poor. fucking poorest person I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. But they're not fast fashion. That motherfucker did not go to Zara. That was no. handmade. That's gonna last years. I just lost enough weight that I can go to Zara again, and it's like it's the best. People do not talk, especially I feel like men don't talk about how when you're plus size, like the lack of fashion choices you can have. Because girls that's so that starting... hard to be drippy when you're fat. It's so hard to drip hard when you got an extra little junk in the trunk. It's rough. They're so simple with the sizes. I know. And it's just like, oh, like this is a double XL. I'm like, listen, bitch, <laughs> I know a 2X. This shit is a fucking extra medium. Get this yeah. off of me. It's really hard. And I think that guys need to, you know, they call them like big and tall stores, but like just call them like big bros. Sturdy. Husky Thick clothes. Kings. Thick, Thick kings. Thick kings. Yeah. <laughs> Thick kings clothing brand. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I I was talking to this like former football player who's a comic and he was just like, yeah, I can't wear anything. I've had these shoes for five years. He's like, I'm size 22. I know like JJ Watt tried to like, or he was connected with some button down for like guys with broad shoulders and small yeah. waist. But it's like, I dude, guess we get it. it. You're fucking niche. jacked, all right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's fucking Superman. I'm going to make clothes for the 1% of men out there. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. Guys. I'm just going to make a clothing brand so I could do a campaign and model it. Yeah. So I can get a bunch of free clothes. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> can we talk about Summer House? How, yeah. did summer, how did Summer House happen? So I was working at Betch's 
this like media company for millennial women making yeah. funny videos, writing tweets, writing memes. It was like joke writing for me. And it's where I first realized like that my humor could be like universal slash viral slash could be monetized. And I was doing, I was interviewing people. I was doing everything. It was such a fun gig. I mean, I was getting paid nothing, but it was like, I was in my alignment. Like I was doing what I loved after so many shitty jobs. So I'd met some summer house cast members and then they like were recasting. And I literally got a DM from a producer and they were like, we know, you know, some of the cast, we know you grew up, you know, in Brooklyn going to like Shelter Island. Like, are you, are you down? And it was one of those things where, I never thought I would do reality TV, but I knew that I loved entertaining. Right. And I was 26. I was single. I thought, why the fuck not? And I did it for three years. I had great experiences. I had horrible experiences. I survived it all. And I think like I learned a lot. Do you ever like look back and like look at the way they like edited shit? And like, have you ever just like ever wanted to call like a producer and be like, hey, what's up with these edits? Yes. Well, my first two seasons, it was like, everything was pretty, if they have natural good storylines, they'll stick kind of real. Right. Um, and also the filming is pretty real. It's the cutting that they decide how they want to tell a story through, through like what perspectives. It's like who they choose to be the talking heads right, right. to like, they'll, like imagine, they'll put that music in the background. It was like, we want you to yes. think she's a bitch. Yes. Like, for example, I try to explain, like, I had a really, really hard third season where we were, like, all locked in the house. Like, there was a lot of fighting and they, like, didn't use my confessionals. And I was like, imagine your people who don't like you narrating your life to America. Yeah. You're just like, that's not what fucking, that's not what happened. That's not yeah. how it happened. But, like, so they can make choices. And it's hard because you're also oversimplified to these, like, characters, like, there's the hot girl, there's the messy girl, there's the truth teller, there's the hot guy, there's the like, the little, whatever. And like, we're as humans so much more complex than that. And also the storylines are so much, when it gets really big, the show, you're all like fighting over production related shit. Right. So it, but like, they can't show that. They're like, you love attention. And then you're like, what are we fighting about? Like, imagine if like, you're the angry one that season. They don't show any of your funny moments, any of you having fun. You're just right. like an angry bitch. Um. <laughs> and they're just like, no, that's just like what we're going to go with. This yeah, year. but it could have easily been like, oh, she's a hero fighting against like something she felt was wrong. Right. It's like, <laughs> so oh, they... yeah, we forgot to tell you her mom died. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> like there was one part where some guys like Hannah's not hanging out with the rest of the group and they cut to like me walking to the bathroom. And I'm like, guys, like, why are we like forcing this yeah. so hard. Like you guys know I had so, to take a shit, right? No, literally once I was going to take a shit and they're like, she never cleans up. And I'm like, my bowels, like, let's consider our bowels. Like, were they, they were like, don't you hate it when somebody poops in here? Like, do they, <laughs> did they ask you like prompt questions or they just oh, like, yeah. Go? yeah, no, that's also the thing. People think that in confessionals, it's like, I need to speak up on something. No, 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 you're sitting there. You don't want to be there. And they're like, okay, don't you think it was annoying when uh... Sophie said that? And you'll right. be like, I don't really think it was annoying. They're like, well, it's going to look really annoying. And America's going to think it's annoying. So they'll like if you kind of side with America on this. And you're going to uh, see. And they're uh, like, you're going to be fake if you don't say she's annoying because we have footage of you kind of rolling your eyes. Oh. Like, you, you, they can do whatever they want. Right? Yeah, this is what it is. Like, didn't Hannah just take, like, the grossest duty earlier? It's like, yeah, I do fucking hate it. You're right. I hate poop. See, I, I, I don't think I could ever do reality TV. One, because, like, I require, like, too many daily medications. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, like where is he? His call time was an hour ago, and they're like, it's going to take him. He's in CVS. <laughs> like, guys, like I, 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 like, I won't be able to do this. Would you ever do reality TV again? I would do it in, like, I like unscripted stuff. Well, I would do it if I was, like, a little more involved in Like, hosting, maybe? Production, or, like, some kind of, like, dating show with friends or something. Or, or just something, yeah, I'm a little more involved in because I realize people like I I am I am my personality. So like even though I'm starting to do some comedy acting and I like that, I'm kind of very like anti five year plans. Like I feel like they're kind of restrictive. I'm very into like general goals where I'm like I like entertaining, I like putting myself out there, I like creating. I kind of yeah. see where the industry pushes me. And like reality TV was a form of entertainment that I tried. And like honestly like it, it was great for my career <laughs> see that's the thing like so i'm sure 
all of that stuff is you're you're kind of you're kind of trying they're telling you to be yourself kind of with like not having the full capability and full range of being yourself if they choose like i feel like my first two seasons they really kind of showed sides of who i am like they wanted right. me they were like show me playing tennis and all this stuff and then we had a covid season that was like bonkers where like yeah. we all were fighting and people are turning on each other and it got like not fun and i'm also i'm sicilian like i'm fucking I don't turn up. get shit they're kind of like you're gonna fight and they're like okay move on and i'm like no what that person just did like they it's need wild. to be yeah like that's not okay like i take things very personally and i'm sensitive yeah. Cause I'm like a loyal friend where like, I would never do that to you. So if someone does that to me, I'm like, Oh, so you, you hate me. You're my enemy now. Yeah. That's what it is. Is if you were like wrong me once, like I'll, I, I like put witchcraft on you. <laughs> yes. Like, I, like, I could tell some dude was like really trying to fuck with me. And I was like, mm, absolutely, absolutely not. But red TV is like, you have to fight and move on, fight and move on, fight yeah, and move see, on. I can't and do every, that. And you have to be fake. Like you have to like act like you're friends with everyone. Even if someone like tried to like make you look horrible on TV, you have to be like, oh, that's just Sally. She's so silly. And I'm like, no, fuck Sally. Yeah, no, fuck that bitch. <laughs> Sally fucking sucks. I'll you're say sad. it. Put that camera over here. <laughs> Sally fucking sucks ass. But you could say Sally sucks, and then they cut it to make it look like you're just being a bitch. Yeah, Sally sucks <laughs> because she shit in my bed, but they'll cut that part out. That's, that's just what it is. She fucking Amber Heard-ed me. <laughs> but also, it's entertainment to be messy. You're supposed to make mistakes. Yeah, of course. You're supposed to be ugly. And ultimately, when I was single and in my 20s, it was really fun, but now it's like, I'm married. You feel like a transition? I definitely feel a transition in that, like, when you have a partner in life, it does kind of like calm you down in a way of like, you have a base, you have support. Right. I travel a lot though, and I have a lot of my own crazy shit, but now I have to consider another person, which is like difficult. But now I feel like, I I also get bored with things. So like three years doing reality oh, that's, TV. That's was- good for him. <laughs> I was thinking about reality TV. Yeah, no, like, you like, no, like we're married, but like I also get bored I with get things. Bored. So I was like, oh, that's if I want to switch it up a little, yeah. but also he's an older man, so like he doesn't have that much time left, so we'll right. be fine. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he's uh, he's in the golden era of his life. Yeah, doesn't look a day over forty. No, he looks like just a young guy whose hair went like. He's like a, a watch model in a Just for Men ad. One hundred percent. I've seen like so many like citizen. <laughs> fucking watch ads with him and it i feel like his fucking cheekbones i like being with men who are hotter than me though like that's yeah my... no i have to do that too if, if i'm the hottest person in this relationship that my ego is gonna go crazy <laughs> Absolutely. it's, it's just true. Go... you start treating them like shit you're just like oh, it's like did you even fucking work out today you're just a piece like, of shit me grapes. <laughs> yeah it's like i need to be with somebody that's hotter than me so when i go out with my fiance people look at her and i'm like okay remember you have to do stuff right to keep her because there's everybody <laughs> else out here it keeps what, you what am line. i hanging out with your fiance oh my god you're so right yeah i need to be with dudes who are hotter because yeah it helps it helps my ego though to be like yeah i got him with that, my yeah, personality that yeah no it flips around it's like i'm funny bitch I was just like, yeah, but my credit sucks. But I'm funny. <laughs> you know, that's why. It's like, I really feel like uh, being able to make women laugh is a, is a big in initially. But funny yeah. runs out at some point. <laughs> that's the thing. Then they start finding you annoying at a certain point. Yeah, you find yourself like, annoying at a certain point. Yeah, You're it's like, like I can't the do fuck this. Up. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, funny is, is like the perfect in, but it is important that I feel like you find someone who like you find them funny in like the simplest ways, like just how they interact and like their little thoughts. Because yeah, like someone trying to be funny gets old real quick. I yeah. also, you know, life New York, be a show. Like New York dating, even like some of these dudes, any women out there are boring as shit, and you think the date went great, and then you realize, oh no, I was great. I deserve an Emmy for what I just did. But then six months in, you're like, I'm tired. I can't yeah. keep up the charm and the wit. I've run out of stories. I'm out. I think it takes a lot of a lot of courage to get out of relationships. Because like people will say, like, back in the day, it's like I had courage and I stayed in my relationship. Sometimes that works. Whatever. I would tell you this though, it doesn't. If there's no kids involved, do not stay in a relationship that is just not working because you're just going to get older 
you're going to get sadder and you're going to get fatter mm -hmm. and you're going to get angrier and you're going to mm -hmm. fucking learn to hate somebody that and you're like you know what he has a good job so i'll stay around here people really need to understand that it's okay to be selfish Oh, I love a breakup. I love a divorce. I love a breakup of an engagement. I live think your beautiful. life. Live, live your, your life. fucking life. Because if you're the one that's left with that person, who cares what other people think? You're the yeah. one that has to spend every day with them. And I do think that, th yeah, there's so many people to meet. And just like settling is because you're afraid of being alone. They say like the happiest people in the world are like in a happy relationship. Next is single people and the least happy people are people in unhappy relationships. I think I saw that on TikTok. Yeah, and then <laughs> TikTok's the new Bible. That's just what it yeah. is. And, yeah. I, and that's why like, I really just want people to stress that like people know my story. People know I was engaged before and that uh, I wasn't and I'm engaged again. Like people know my life because I'm an idiot and put it on the internet, but like, <laughs> You know, so like I, I know I know what it's like. I, I'm not going to live my life for anybody else if I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just I, I can't do that. And your relationship, like they're a mirror to you and like their thoughts become your thoughts and like their conversation is what you're surrounding yourself with and your happiness is dependent upon the energy around you. So like it's sometimes you just need to get out of it. Yeah. And it's like, when my fiance comes home, it's like, I'm actually, there's a weird feel. Like you said, there's a feeling with dudes. It's like, mm -hmm. all right. Even every day I'm like, all right, I, I did the right thing. I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. didn't fuck this up yet. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm hanging in there. But um, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm doing the best that I can. When you were having like anxiety in, in high school, college, summer house, I love, I love summer house. I just love, I just love the name Summer House. And, you know, you were having like performance anxiety, but you do stand up right mm -hmm. now. So mm -hmm. you're doing stand up. Do you still have performance anxiety when you perform? Great question. So the first time I did stand up was at Caroline's in front of 300 people. I did 10 minutes. Love it. It's like a podcast show. And my friend was like, do 10 minutes of stand up up top. And I remember before I went on stage, I was like, this could be my tennis. Like I could walk on stage and freeze, be all in my head, be like worried about everything. But I got on stage and I felt like I was just like talking to a friend at brunch. And I think I just realized in that moment, like I, tennis was something that like I love to do, but I actually didn't love competing. And my, I always felt like I was crazy. I was fucked up, but it was actually just my body telling me like, you don't like this anymore. It and was, you were like kind of doing it for other people kind of. Oh my God. I had so much pressure from like coaches. My parents put so much money into my tennis that they didn't always have. Right. Like for a 14 year old, like I was sent to Florida. Like I had the weight of the world on my shoulders with it. So I think with, with stand up, not only am I the only one who's involved in my stand up, but when I get off the stage, I don't win or lose. And I have, Cause I'm, I'm like greener in the industry. I don't have it attached to my ego where right. I'm like, I'm this comedian. I'm like, I go on stage, I try my best. I walk off and I'm proud of myself. And that's all I wanted for my tennis that I didn't have. Mm. So for stand up, it's become this like just There's fun, no creative expression for me. Yeah. And also like, I don't have feet. I don't have that much fear and I'm not holding it too close to my ego. So I actually like, don't, really get nervous the only time I get nervous is if like it's an audition for something or like uh, I know someone's watching and I'll be like nervous for like the first five seconds and then I'll kind of calm down but also deep down I like I like a little nerves I like the high of it all but I don't have this sick horrible anxiety in my stomach that I used to have when I was another sports reference I say it's like surfing when you find the right thing when you find the right wave you just go oh yeah but when you're like fucking with the wrong waves, like it's going to be a nightmare and yes. shit's going to be hard for you. Another good one yeah. too. It's like when you hit a home run in baseball, it feels like you didn't even hit the ball. It just exactly. goes. Exactly. I feel like I'm doing what I'm meant to do now. Love it. Even though I do love to play tennis and I'm just because you're really good at something doesn't always mean it's what you're meant to do. Or maybe for that time, it's what I was meant to do. But at this time in my life, I found like what makes me happy. I love everything about that. That is inspirational as fuck. So my uh, my thing is too, is like, if I bomb, it's whatever. Like I used to tell my friends though too, it's like, yeah, like what's the worst thing a girl could say? No, just, you know, that's it. They say also, no. Also like 
people always say like stand up's the hardest thing ever like go up and you bomb it's like so would all of you but i also love like whenever a joke doesn't work sometimes the funniest stuff is being like oh you guys tightened up on that or yeah, like yeah. Mm, okay th that worked in my head in the uber never mind like yeah. you you like that's like i almost feel like there's no actual i've like lost like i've like played duke in a third set and fucking double fault at match point that's a loss that's like you hate yourself yeah being on stage and like fucking up a sentence i'm like who gives a fuck <laughs> no one cared i tell people this like all the time too it's like i've had like close friends like die like that's a yeah. lot yeah you know what i mean like, exactly like I, i've had horrible things happen to me in my life it's like yo if i go to a comedy club and they're like all right and then i'm like okay i'm just gonna go home i'm just gonna yeah. go home and, and do my podcast and jerk off and you also sleep. yeah you also get better every time you get on stage like even if it was like the worst show, you get knowledge from it. So I just consider it like it's always practice. And then when I go on tour, I'm like in front of my favorite people and people who've been following me forever. And That's it's the just best like thing. A people hate on us, but I don't give a fuck, dog. I'll sell places out with my <laughs> podcast, bitch. <laughs> yeah, well, also the first like couple minutes. Give me eighty percent of the door. I want eighty percent of the door. <laughs> I'm so excited for your tour. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. That My thing is, like, if I'm having fun, that's all that matters. Because I know the type of person oh, yeah. that I am. If I'm having fun, you're going to have fun. And that's exactly. it. Exactly. That's if what I, I always say. Have fun no, on stage. Then I'm like, okay, this is going to be a bad set. You're yeah. like, I could light up a room and I could burn the place fucking down. Which one do you want? Yeah, that's basically <laughs> what do you guys want tonight? Do you guys want to see me fucking implode up here? <laughs> because i can do that too and that's way easier you guys want to hear about my childhood trauma let's go how many minutes do i have oh i'm headlining it's an hour <laughs> let me tell you about the first time i saw my grandpa hit my grandma oh my god but it's you know? amazing though because you like perform and then you cut the fat you add more you're reflecting on yourself and yeah it's a fucking artistic expression i'm not walking off i mean some guys i see them punch walls they get all fucking upset and i'm like okay you're getting off on this yeah this is like too you, much. you wanted to be upset <laughs> yeah i just want to hit that stage and pop this pussy and yeah exactly you know pop what that I mean? pussy all night and pop that pussy for an hour dude and like yeah dude that's worth the price of and the it, it flies that's it flies. why it, my thing is too it's i talk like really slow sometimes and that's gonna be perfect <laughs> I'm just going to talk as close as possible. What they don't tell you about like comedy, an hour comedy, you're not giving a fucking hour TED talk. It's a very engaging two way. Like you're like a um, concert person. Like there's a back, yeah. back and forth. So like there's a lot of audience interaction and laughing and it becomes this journey of you and the audience. So I'm excited for that. For it's going to be awesome. And then my last question uh -oh. I ask every guest. Uh oh is are you happy today oh my god i'm actually this is so annoying and obnoxious of me but i am happy today no that's great that's not annoying and obnoxious because most this, days i'm not <laughs> no some days i'm not I, I woke up today not really that happy because i realized like i had to do a bunch of shit like i have to do laundry like you're like because i really do this fucking podcast with the summer house girl yeah um, like jeez. you know i i will throughout the day be all over the place like i'll have a good hour I'll have a, I'll have a killer hour like fucking like lit and then i'll be like i fucking eat so it goes up and down who knows what the rest of the day will be but i felt very creative this morning and i i was like watching wimbledon and like the sun was nice and i was like answering some emails i wasn't feeling overwhelmed i felt like i had enough time to like l look at all the stuff i'm doing it's the and best. um yeah like then you have an hour where it sucks Exactly. Yeah. And like, I might get an email that might ruin my whole day in five minutes, but that that's is, why it's, that's it's just, you gotta live. live in the moment. Like you <laughs> yeah. said, five year plans. I'm a five minute plan guy. <laughs> Dude, everyone has to be like, what are you up to next week? I'm like, who knows? Yeah, I'm trying I'm like, to survive moment by moment. You know, just get my money and go home, go to sleep. That's it. Yeah. I'm just trying to live my life. Mm -hmm. But guys, thank you. First of all, Hannah for coming on. I appreciate it so much. Where can thank everybody you find you me. on the, on the interwebs? Ooh, Hallibur.com. I have all my shows coming up. Um, if you're in Madison, Milwaukee, Tacoma, um, Portland, Los Angeles. So look look at that. Um, Rhode Island. Anyway. Rhode Island. And then yeah, follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Hannah Burner and then B E R. 
And then listen to my pod, Burning in Hell is my mental health comedy pod. Danny, I'd love to have you. Yeah, and let's do Daily it. Squad is like my pop culture pod. I have love my it. own Joey. Um, uh, so uh, Paige, uh, she's Italian. Paige de Sorbo. Uh, that, that's what it is. That's why you always need one. You need one. <laughs> Get you in the door a little bit. You know you what I mean? You need one full. You need yeah. one full that's just like, this guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> this guy's good with his money. This guy knows. She's this connected. Knows she knows the guy. guy. Yeah. guy. <laughs> kid has better equipment than me i'm gonna hang out with this guy <laughs> you know that's what it is i would love to do it uh listen hannah burner if you're in any of those cities go steer if you're anywhere with an iphone get those podcasts <laughs> live your life five minutes at a time that's that's all it is but thank Hell you yeah. so much thank you so much for coming on and uh 100 i'll come on your podcast and i'll cry though please i'd be honored all right bet <laughs>